I have it. And so then that means. So that's going to. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. No, you can go ahead. <laughs> and so just to double check, this is, we want this up by Monday, right? That's the plan. That's the goal. Or no? No. Good question. So um, let's try to mess with it. It's not going to be perfect by Monday, but let's okay. at least like get logged in and kind of start trying to get comfy with it. And if okay. you are, since you got in kind of late, just because you weren't able to get in, we can work one on one. We can set up a Zoom if you want, and we can walk through stuff too. I mean, I I, I did stuff in my other account, and I I, I think I, I think I, I feel okay. Just okay. okay. Well, just let me know. Okay. Thank you. I'm glad you got in. Well, hi everybody. Hey. I think we scared everybody away. I know. <laughs> That's okay. You get a more intense learning lab today. So we're so happy to see you guys. And so um, Steph and I are going to go through part two of our learning lab series. I don't know if you guys were with us last time, but one thing that we've been trying to make really clear to everybody is that this is definitely not a substitute for Schoology's formal PD. This is just a learning lab where we can hang out, try some new things together, take some chances, make mistakes, get messy and all of that good stuff. And so today we're gonna go a little bit deeper with the things that we learned last week. And so there is a link, and I'll put it again in the chat box to our slideshow. Steph, do you wanna start sharing it? Or do you want, and then that way I can just talk through it. What do you mean? I Do you wanna share the, the slideshow, the screen? Are you saying on the screen? Uh-huh. Oh, okay, yeah, that's fine. I didn't know if it's easier for you to. Oh, I know it's. And we'll flip flop, remote. but like the first ones are just so yeah. uh, short. Okay. Hold okay. On. So, Steph is going to share our latest and greatest. And just like last time, all of the links are embedded in the slide deck. So, it's a super easy one stop shop, just like last time. And so today we are just gonna move along with Schoology. So hopefully last time we were able to get familiar with the navigation bar, how to move around in it, what the different things mean. And today we're gonna show you how to add assignments and just how to use your notifications and how to use your messages. So last time. Oh, sorry. Um, last time we had a Schoology lab, if you weren't part of it, the link is also in here just for you to get at really easily. And then this is the link for today. So it's in the chat box. You can have everything that we're doing. And so here's what we're gonna to do today by the end of it. You should be able to check your messages and send them, check your notifications, bring in a couple apps. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about the app situation. There's a couple that we think are really, really important. And then there's a lot of other stuff that we're gonna say, hey, let's put the brakes on this for now. Um, and we'll explain that in a little bit. Also how to add resources, how to create folders to manage all the junk that you're gonna put in here, and then add assignments and talk more about where you can get the assignments from and what they look like. Okay, Cal, thank you. I'm gonna start off with messages. This is really basic. Um, let me go back into my Schoology account because I got out. And um, I wanted to show you that on here we have if you click on the messages part, there'll be a link to just a little cheat sheet in that. Down here, the little film icons have videos that go with them as you go through the slideshow. And I'm sorry, I thought I was in, but I exited out. I had 5,000 tabs going. Okay, so we'll start with messages. And there's two uh, areas on Schoology that you access your messages. So the first one, if you look up on, and it'll be on every page that you go on, it'll have that toolbar up top. You'll access the envelope and you'll click on the envelope. When you click on that, it's going to have a drop down. And if you have any messages, it'll pop up on the envelope. So if this is just a white envelope like I have, then there's no messages. If you go down in here, this is where you'll see all the messages that are sent to you. And if you wanna create a new message, you'll click on the new message. So we're gonna go into the new message first. And if I start typing, so if I start typing Kelly, um, 
I'll find all the Kellys in my system. But if I want to send something to Kel, I will through that way. And then maybe I'll say um, hi. And I could put in a message here, or if I have a file I need to send to her, a link, or something from the Resource Center, which we'll get to in a second. Um, and then also it has an audio and video recording component, which is really neat. Um, you'll click on that. The first time that you use it, when you click on the audio, it'll ask to um, use your microphone, so you would say yes. And then on this one, it's going to ask to use your camera. Obviously, you're going to say yes. So you just click on it once and it pops right up. It's very similar to Seesaw if anybody uses that. Um, I might record and say, hey, Cal, Seesaw and Schoology are awesome. I stop it. And then I'm going to insert that and I could put a little message up here, um, have a great day. So I was able to send an audio recording to her. I could also do the video too. Um, so I'm gonna send that to her. So now she has a message from me. And if I go back to my icon and I want to respond to an email that pops up here, I can just click on that email. And it's, it's very similar to Gmail where you just have that option to start typing down there. And it has all the little keys that you can use, the little components I just talked about. Um, you can see the messages that you sent. And if you wanna get rid of them, you can always go like this and the X right there, and it'll, add, it'll prompt to say, do, are you sure? And then you'll go into your inbox. If you wanna get rid of any messages in your inbox, cause I just got rid of that, there's no messages. There is an option, it's a button that says delete over here. So that's the messages um, option this way. The other way is if you wanna message all of your, your students in your course. So if I go to my kindergarten course, and you'll see this screen. On the left-hand side, you'll see a drop-down that says Course Options. So you click on that, and you click Send Message. So once you do that, you, you have to do it within that course. So if I want to send my kindergartners this message, I have to be within that cool kindergarten course. You can decide who you're going to send it to. Because I don't have parents associated with my course, I don't have the option to click parents. You will because the parents will be associated with your course. But for now, I'm just gonna send it to my members, which also known as your students. Um, and then I could put, you know, please have your work done by Friday. And, and all of those options are in there as well to add. And then if, they, if you get a response, it will come within your center right here, your message center. If you're in a group, so a grade level group, you're going to do the same thing. So if you go over to group options and you wanted to send all the people in your group um, a resource, you can click there. And once again, if you just wanted to send it to the people in charge of the group, that'd be admin. If you wanna send it to all the members, you would click there and you can send anything you want in that way. So that's kind of the group email um, choice, kind of like in Gmail, you have the group emails, this is how you do it in here. Are there any questions so far with the uh, messaging? And um, down here for groups, group, uh, course and group messages, if you click on that, um, it'll give you another little rundown on how to do it. All right, let's look at notifications. So on your, if, if any of you are familiar with Facebook, a lot of times, the, um, you'll know, you'll kind of know what I'm talking about, but on Facebook you have this, a little symbol up here and your notifications will tell you if anybody's messaged you, if anybody's commented, all of those things. So when you click on the bell, what'll happen is everything that you're involved in, all the courses you're involved in, all of the notifications will pop up here. So I was a member in a student's course um, in the summer when we were kind of playing around with this. So some of the assignments she posted popped right up here for me. Um, when you have yours, it'll be all your students' assignments. And you'll also have, um, if a student commented on a post, if a student turned in something, if a student commented on an assignment. So it's, it's very similar to Google Classroom, um, but it's more detailed. 
And then here are your requests. This is where you're going to get those group requests. Like, um, do you want to be a member of the third grade team? Or um, are you going to do the run for the arts group? So this is the place that you collaborate. It'll tell you, oh, we want you in the group. And that's how you add it there. Um, and then going over here to these notifications, this is how you can check your notification settings for the email. I didn't go over that, I'm sorry. But you can click what you wanna see in your notifications based on um, what you click there. And that's it for resource, I mean, sorry, for notifications. Okay, now we're gonna get into the nitty gritty, the pulling in the apps. And Kelly kind of, she wants to work with an app later on. So I'm gonna show you how to add that to your system. If you get glitchy, just let us know and we can, we can figure it out. So if you could go to the array up in the right hand corner in your Schoology. And once again on the slideshow, there's directions on how to do all of this. You click on that. And these are the ones that I already have within mine, but I'm gonna to go to the App Center. And the App Center is the place where everything, all the apps that you wanna embed into your Schoology account um, live. And Kelly wanted us to have YouTube. And I don't know, Kel, do you think because I, I already added it, I don't think it's on here. No, go up towards the top. It should still appear. I think it's in the left column, somewhere towards the top. Oh, there you go. Thank you. Okay, um, so you're going to find your YouTube app, and you might need Kelly to help you to do that, like me. <laughs> and you're going to click on the app, and you'll see a page that looks like this. And it gives you the information, like what category it's in, what levels it's for, and what, who it's recommended for. It'll give you a brief description of the app as well. So you will click Install Resource App. So everybody, um, if you could do that. And this is just your agreement that you're going to be using this just for Schoology and um, educational purposes. You probably will only have the option to install for me um, because you're in the student, I mean the teacher account. So you'll see something that looks like this and you push install. So at that point you will have YouTube in your um, in your courses and in your resources. And Kelly, when she gets to what she's doing, like she'll go through and how you put in YouTube, she'll go through that with you. Oh, okay, so, as I say, it doesn't show up in the waffle yet. In when you went in here? Oh, it, it might not. This is just like, you know, it's like the feed of the most recent ones. Okay. So for me, like I actually, there's a, there's a function in here where you can put which ones you want up there but you're gonna see it's more, it's actually easier to access when you're doing your activities the way Kelly will show you. Um, and let's go back. And um, let's talk about the resources. So when I go into my resources, this is where you're gonna store all your junk. So it's almost like your Google Drive, but the cool thing is, is Google Drive can reside within here. So, this is, if you look on the left-hand side, this tells you which um, section of resources you're in. So maybe I don't know where a resource is and I have to do it. So I do ed tech and I'm searching for it. You can do it that way. But if you have it organized, you just go into your personal and this is your home. And when you down or upload things into Schoology, you can actually click, I want it in my home, I want it in my downloads and Right here, you have the ability to add um, learning objectives. You can create your own, like I can statements, or you can do the state standards. And so if I looked and I'm like, oh, I wanna do the next gen ones, and I'm gonna look at the grades and it's first grade and I'll scroll down here, I'm gonna put that one in. So that one's in my resources. Um, once I go back, there we go. So now I have that in there and when I do that, what I can do is I can um, add it, I can import it into, I can copy it to a folder, I can move it to a folder. So if I want that on an assignment, it can go in there. This is your downloads. So anything that you have for downloads that you've brought in from outside or from within Schoology resources, you can put them in there. The public 
is where you can throw public ones. I tend to just keep them in my downloads. I like to have, have everything in one place. So if you go over to your left-hand side, you click public. This is where you're going to see tons and tons and tons of resources. And it can be overwhelming because it's, if you just keep scrolling and scrolling, but you can narrow it down. So I'm gonna go to my math and I might do, I wanna resource type. I'm gonna do um, an assessment and I'm gonna go to eighth grade. Let's see what we can find. So, and you can look at what people have rated them. So it looks like they're not doing, <laughs> the ratings aren't that high for the, sec the sections that I picked. Um, but if I wanted to add the pre-algebra tests, I would go over here to plus, and it's added into my resources now. I could do total recall, it's added. So these, all these resources, when you go back to your personal, and you go to your downloads, they'll be down there. So you have it all in one place. Also, um, in the public, if you notice, I forgot to mention in the last one, but they have these um, badges that you can share with your kiddos, which are kind of cool. Um, and so if they're doing something awesome, you can, you can give that to them and you just add it to your resources. Um, let's go back to my resources. And if you click on your group on the left-hand side, if you're a member of a group, so maybe the fourth grade um, team, or the English language arts team at LMS or whatever, um, that's where you can share resources. So in the group there, that's what uh, Kelly shared both of our resources today. Um, and you can also, once we get going, each school can share re resources. So if Lakeside Middle School has one thing for their um, SEL learning, they would put it within there and then everyone could access it. So it's a nice place to hide or um, share everything. The apps, this is where you're going to see that YouTube app right in there. Um, a little warning or SOS or whatever, this Google Drive app, I installed it and it's, it's being funky. The one that you want to install is your Google Drive resource app. That is what pulls up all of your um, documents and things in your Google Drive. What so about, make sure. Sorry, Stephanie, what about Classroom? Is that an option? It's not only because that is, um, that's also a learning management tool, so they don't really mesh, like mesh. Does that make sense? So this is kind of gonna become our new classroom in a sense. I mean, I have to switch gears and I'm not, I love Google Classroom. So is this instead of now Google Classroom? Um, I think that the transition will happen where this is what we will be using. It's very similar to Google Classroom, but it has more. Like I, I like, I loved Google Class, Classroom, but once I got in here, okay, you can do so much more. Okay, so just start using this as my platform instead of Classroom. Yeah, but I mean, make the transition and do it in a comfortable, what's comfortable for you. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, so we'll be training our kids on this, maybe once we start feeling a little more comfortable. I don't feel like diving into this next week if I'm just learning it myself. Right. Um, and maybe once I'm comfortable with it, then I can start showing them how to do it when they're in class with me. Exactly. And that's one thing that I'm working on right now. I have a bank of little um, videos and things that you'll be able to share with your kids on how to um, go through everything too. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, so let's get back. So um, on each of these purple tiles here, the buttons, you can click on those and it shows you a little bit more, a little more in depth. Um, the last thing I'm gonna talk about is folders. So I am big on color coding and keeping folders and doing all of that. Um, I think Kelly has worn off on me. So when I go to one of my courses, and I made it messy for a reason because I wanted to show you how I can clean it up. So see, I have all of these documents that are popping up and my kids, my students are like, what, I can't do all of this. What is, what's going on? So what I wanna do is I wanna create a folder to throw it into. So if you wanna walk with me step-by-step step in your Schoology as I'm doing it here, you can. So 
I'm going to do add materials and you'll click add folder. And now what you'll do is you can pick a color, whatever you'd like. And I'm going to title this um, math assignments. And what I want to do is I'm going to add actually an image to it. So I'm going to look at my images and you can actually go to the web, but that would be you have to put in the link for the web. So here I'm going to go into what my downloads are and I'm going to double double dip on a picture just for time's sake. And if you notice the picture looks a little big. And so what I can do if you noticed I clicked when you hover over, there's a little icon that's a photo icon. You click on that and you can change how big it is. So you just kind of play with it. So I didn't want it too big. Um, you can insert other content in there too, even if you want to link with your um, folder, anything. Um, and then this is all the formatting that you can use if you want to do something in the description. The description shows up in the feed. And let's say I have all this planning, I put my math assignments together, but it's for two weeks from now. I'm going to click on this folder and I'm going to go to the 30th and I'll click it. And let's say, okay, I'm only going to have that folder up for two weeks because I don't want people doing, you know, wasting too much time on late work. So I'm going to go over and I'm going to go to about the 14th. And so in that case, and you can put a time here if you want to, like 9 a.m. or whatever. In that case, your fo folder will only be visible to the students in between these times. Also, this drop down. let's say you're still working on your folder, but you want to save it because you like how it looks. Um, you would put unpublished so that you can still work on it before the kids see it. And also the publish, you could do publish on start date or publish during the date range. So whichever option you want. I'm gonna get rid of my dates here because I wanna show you the folder and what it looks like. So and this, at this point, I'm going to push create. Your folder will pop up at the very bottom. So I'm going down. So here's my new folder. And I, I did some PD on, I like was learning about it, um, kind of playing around with it. And they said to do a drag and drop, um, that that would work. But for me, it just didn't seem to be very functional. So what I like to do is just click on here and I'm gonna put move. And I can move it to the folder that I want. And then it'll pop into that folder. So now within my folder, if you do the arrow down, it'll have the assignment that I put in there. Also, Stephanie, can I yeah. ask a question about folders? Yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt, but it's a small group and I feel comfortable to ask you guys. Yeah, um, sure. I'm on my Schoology account and I don't have folders as an option. So I feel like some of my buttons aren't the same as yours. So when you go up to the top, you, do you have an add materials? When I'm on my course, um, I just have materials on the left. There is no add button anything. I feel like I'm in, I feel like I've been assigned the wrong. Over on the right hand side, do you have other classes that you can pop into? Uh, let me look for you. Like your other courses. And also, um, if you only have a few of these over here, like materials and updates, but you don't have grade book or any of those, then it, it could be with the rostering issue that Kelly was talking about. Okay. And that, that's getting resolved, and she'll talk to you about that in a few minutes. I noticed that the uh, folder that the district made for us didn't have all of those options. So the ones on the left was limited, um, as opposed to the one that I had made, because I had made one earlier for my class as I was messing around with it, and that had all of the options that you're showing. So, the, the one that you, so like when you go to your courses, over on the right-hand side, um, you should have a list of all your courses? Yeah, mine does not look like that. Oh. Mine neither. The one the district made has nothing. I made one earlier and mine has what you're showing, but the district one, you know, says I'm at Winter Gardens, which I know people are aware of that, but it has nothing that you're showing right now in the district one. On the I'm left following right. along on yours, but on mine, I, I have none of that. Okay. And I think that, Kelly, if you could chime in, I think that's the rostering issue that they're dealing with. 
Yeah, that's part of that known issue. So on Friday, um, a lot of that should look very different. Um, I, again, Stephanie and, and Kelly, I, I don't mean to blow this as being unuseful because I know once I have all of those items, but right now, I can't even do any of what you're doing. I, I don't know if you want me to share my screen, but I feel like we're all in the same boat with, I, I don't even know. <laughs> my class, even the roster, they assigned me to a river view. It has river view and I'm on, I mean, I even in, yeah. and I thought it was a merge and it didn't happen. So I feel like this is a waste of our time. <laughs> so Sharon, can you share your screen real quick? Thank you. Yes, please. Thank sure. you so much. I'm just kind of feeling frustrated because when I go to my courses at the top, um, this Riverview one isn't even mine. This looks like it could possibly be mine, but it's not the one that I originally created. It looked like I somehow I just had my group minion one that I think that's the one that I'd started practicing with. I maybe I did something wrong in my end. No, I don't, I don't think it's you. It's 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 the back end of Schoology. It's okay. just a rostering issue, I think. But I'd like to see what what well, it looks like. Then that's what we're getting. Um. So. Oh, okay. Sorry, I was reading the chat. Did you share? Yes, I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. I thought I was on here. No. <laughs> um, host disabled attendee screen sharing. Can you help me with that? Yep. Yeah. So I have a question. So huh. do you want us to use the one that the district made or can we just keep the one that we made? So I think what's going to happen, Kelly, and correct me if I'm wrong, um, the the district one is the one that we want because that's what's getting populated by the sys okay so looking at yours yeah so what i'm seeing here is this is not the enterprise account mm -hmm. and so that means the rostering is off because you should have your your grade book you should have everything over here on the left hand side if you go to your courses can you click on courses Yes, ma'am. That's exactly what mine looks like, too. Okay, so can you click oh, on the other course just to see? Other. Um, Which one were you just in? I believe it was. It was that? Yeah. Can you click in the other one? Yeah. yeah. Go in the other course. That one. Yeah. There's something up with the rostering. It's got to be that, and it. And I don't, I, and I just don't want to burst you guys' bubbles or waste your time today. And I just feel like um, we, we kind of need guidance or the back end in order to be able to flow and do this with you. So if I don't have the buttons, I don't, I don't want to waste your time today. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Yeah. For um, sure. But what this is though, what you're seeing, Sharon, is this is not the enterprise account. And okay. so that makes me wonder this is a rostering issue but this is another issue and sean you said you're experiencing the same thing yeah i have one i created before i have that that has all the stuff that i have folders because i was playing around with it with delaney pendleton she's amazing um and then i now have the district one that says i'm at winter gardens and my district one looks exactly like sharon armstrong's so my other one ha i think my other one has everything let me let me double check which is interesting because the free accounts should not have a lot of the enterprise tools. So. Oh no, my, that one doesn't either. Okay. Um, doesn't either. However, I am, this is another, I think this is part of the rostering, but I think part of it is a separate issue that I need to bring forward. Diego, did you say that you were also encountering this? Yeah, me too, Kelly. This is Francis Mendoza. Okay. Thanks Francis. My yeah, it looks exactly the same. I have the two classes and I don't know what to do either. Okay. Sharon, um, it looks like on the back end, what I'm seeing is that it's really weird. You're, you are in, you're listed as a teacher and you're also listed as a parent. Did you sign in as a parent as well? Yes. Okay, for Lakeview? Yes. Okay, let me see if I can change something for your teacher account. Hold on just a second. I know, and I think it was really weird, Stephanie, because originally I had my 13 year roster. roster. So I had, I had a roster that was, you know, way back. And it, they were my kids from that year. Um, and then we also, I also, you know, had some username issues and you had checked me and. Right. 
And okay. you're at what you're at what site again? Thank you. Yeah, okay. So I just I just changed you were at Lakeside um, Union School District as your label. So see if you can refresh and see if it does anything. I don't know if it will, but Okay. So Kel, do you I mean I don't know at this point what you want to do. No, I think I'm going to keep going anyway, just for our friends that do have the access and also for the friends that are reporting it. Um, if you guys don't feel like it's useful, that's okay. Um, feel free to check out and you can always check back in once this works. And then if you also just kind of want to hang out and see it, you are definitely welcome to do it. And um, also, if we have time at the end, we can still troubleshoot some of these things and we'll see if that quick fix may have been the patch that we needed. Okay, and then I ended on folders, so you should be good to go. And then before we move, Sharon, did it work or no? You're muted. I logged out completely. I'm trying to go back in with your Okay, Google. cool. Okay, go ahead, Cal. We can just And then will you guys put there. will you guys put me on the list too, Sean, just to check mine out cuz I yep. have one other one. Okay, thank you. So as as Kelly's presenting, I'll work on the back end with all you guys. Thank you. Yeah, uh -huh. just throw some stuff in the chat box too cuz you know, this is one of those things where I'm glad that you guys feel comfortable bringing this to us cuz we can't fix what we don't know. Do you know what I mean? Like it's not personal for us. Like we just want it to work for you so you can do what you do best. All right. And then is it, are you able to share Cal? Just give me one second. Okay. Sh Sean, you can try to go back in if you log out and go back in, see if it works. I also wanted to mention that on the one that the district made, um, I wasn't able to add or drop any students. And right now with all the movement of our kids, that would be really practical to enable it or make sure that that's in there. No, actually, so there's a reason why we don't want you to do that because this is supposed to sync directly with our student information system. And so when we manipulate it ourselves, it creates a lot of problems in the back end. So basically, as soon as a kid is dropped in Illuminate, they should be dropped in Power School. Does that make sense? You mean dropped as in from the district or dropped from the class? From the class. Okay. So all of that rostering is linked to our student information system. Okay. And so what happens then is if we manipulate it, it's going to do these weird overrides and it's going to create like this huge mess. So it's better to just not. OK, because I was able to find all my kids when I made my own group. Right, I know. I know. Like from a teacher perspective, like I yeah. totally feel that. From like a back end perspective, it's like, please don't. Okay. And okay. so what happens if the, your roster doesn't get updated on time? It, it should with like every overnight it sinks. Well, yeah, well that was what was said. And once it was finally up, well, I'll, I'll double check it. I haven't checked it since I ignored it. Since I noticed yeah, and it keep in mind, Diego, that there, because of there were some of the things on the back end for Schoology, that on Friday, um, a lot of these issues are being worked out right now. What it came down to was a course assignment number was wonky, so Schoology is working through it, and by Friday, um, they have to tweak numbers for every single class and teacher in the district, so it's been taking a little bit. So by Friday, it should be up and running. So if it doesn't look right yet, just kind of hang tight. Okay. Kelly, I know you want to move forward. I just want to clarify with you and Stephanie both. When we're logging in and using the zip code to find our school, you guys want us to use Lakeside Union or our school site? So that's a good question because before they had you guys all rostered as Lakeside Union, but I am pulling you over. Like, so I just did, Sharon, I just pulled you over to Lakeview. So I don't know if you want to try to go in as Lakeview. Is that who asked? Yes, thank you. Yeah. So go in, did you try to go in as Lakeview? Um, I just came in as Lakeside Union because I thought the last communication was we all had to enter into the district one. So I will specify okay. the school now. And I'm sorry, it's changed. It's changed through Schoology. That's why, like they've no changed. It. Thank you, girls. Yeah. All right, my friends. So going forward, if we're talking about assignments here, I'm going to go in my courses and you should have this little area. So I'm going to click on my kindergarten course and I have my materials. When I, um, I did folders just like Stephanie had suggested, 
And so let's say that I wanted to go ahead and um, in my slide deck, we're talking about how to add an image, add an equation, or add a symbol. So let's say that I wanted to work on some estimation stuff with math. What I can do is I can go ahead and by clicking on add materials, I can add an assignment. I can also add an assessment or a discussion or an album or a whole bunch of other things. I'm gonna go ahead and add an assignment and I'm gonna call it estimation. And then in this description area, you're gonna see this option here to insert content. I can insert an image. I can insert symbols. I can insert equations. I can do a whole bunch of stuff. So for me in particular, um, when I'm working on estimation with my kids, I love this website, Estimation 180, because it's filled with all kinds of cool images of just things for kids to estimate. And so let's say that I wanted to save this image. I'm going to copy this image and go back to my Schoology. And I can insert this link here. And I'm going to call it. And I'm going to create it. Just kidding. You always have to give it a category. And when my kids click on it, ta-da! And so that's how you can go ahead and estimate, um, estimate, estimate on the brain. That's how you can go ahead and add different uh, images to it. Like I said before, you can do equations and symbols, which is very similar to if you're using Microsoft Word, you can use those editing tools that are within there. So it's pretty straightforward. Like Stephanie mentioned before, in here, there is the, of, um, the walkthrough, the job aid for how to do that. Okie dokie. So the next question that we get a lot is, how do I add stuff from my Google Drive? So Stephanie had mentioned before that in your Google Drive, there is, um, that's where you keep all of your stuff. There are two options for Google Drive in Schoology. And so like Stephanie said, you're gonna really wanna make sure that when you're in your, um, she called it an array, I call it a waffle. When you go in there, there's different um, choices. So there's this one here, Google Drive Assignments, and then there's the resource app. This is the one that you want, the resource app. So just make sure that you have that installed. I just wanted to point out that when I did it right now, it asked me to verify it. So when mm -hmm. I went into my resources to look for it, I clicked it and it told me, please verify. I verified it and then it told me that there was an error. Hmm. It reads a weird error, but which is for another, another time. But the main point is that I had to verify it. You probably will have to verify it just so it makes sure it, that it's not like commandeering another drive and it's actually yours. Okay, so with that in mind, I'm gonna go back to my homepage. Let's say that I want to add a Google, um, something from my drive. So when you go to add materials, and again, let's say I wanna add an assignment. When that is in there, um, I wanna add my map slides. I can go to insert content and you'll see here on the side, I have this option for Google Drive resource app. When I click on that, if you give it a second, it's gonna pull up a whole bunch of stuff that you have in your Google Drive. So I wanna add that. And I'm gonna go ahead and just import the link. And remember, give it a category. And it will appear. And so if someone wanted to click on it, they can now see this exact slideshow. Or if it was a document, you could do that as well. Do you guys have questions about that? I'm gonna stop for a second. So yeah, I, can I do, it. Kelly. Um, so typically in classroom, you would send them slides and make them their own copies so that they can edit that slide. How does that work? And can you show us how to do that, please? How to like give everybody their own slide deck? It, it will prompt, it'll prompt to do that. Okay, I just want, if I'm sending each kid their own copy, so in mm -hmm. class, that's Yeah, so it's not gonna like edit yours. Yes, I just wanna make sure that kids will be able to open it similar to what they're doing in classroom. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm still working on your thing, Sharon. Okay, 
So that one's pretty straightforward. The last thing that we have is how do you add videos from YouTube? And so, um, let me go back. On here, you can see that we also have a video for how to do that. If you followed along with Stephanie and you added in that uh, app for YouTube, this makes it super, super easy. So if you go into Schoology, I, this toolbar is like in my way. Give me a second. I don't know why it's doing that today. Let's try this again. Okay. So let's say that I am in my math course and this time, um, actually I don't want to be in my math course. I'm going to go ahead and do it in my writing course. And I want to add a video that I really like from YouTube for my kids to watch. So let's say that I want to do it on um, something on the letter Y. So if I go into my insert content and I've added the YouTube app, I can click on YouTube and I can just search for a video that I like to use. Ah, and here it is. And then I can just go ahead and import it. And so I can do it so that kids can view it. I can also import it as embedded. The benefit to doing it when you import it as embedded is you can put some different restrictions on it. For instance, that the kids can't fast forward it. So they have to watch it in its entirety. Um, there's a whole bunch of different things that you can do with it. And so when I go ahead and use the app, it will just appear. So there it is. And it's pretty straightforward. You guys have questions about that? No, I like I, I've bored you to death. <laughs> I love it. I like it. So with that, that is, let me go back to this. I'm going to show you this one last little piece that we have here is um, we wanted to let you know that that's all we got for this portion or this edition of Schoology today. And we wanted to let you guys know that we have a new email for our whole entire Ed Services team because I know that when you're in the thick of it, you're like, I have no idea who I need to direct this to. Is it Lauren? Is it Kelly? Is it Steph? Is it IT? Like, what's going on? And so we've created Ed Services as kind of a catch all for any educational technology slash Ed Services issues that you might encounter. And then we also have a new phone extension, 2645, and that goes to the back area where most of us hang out. Um, at the DO during the day. And so one of us will pick up the phone and we'll be able to get to you pretty quickly. So if there is something that you're encountering and you really just need help with it quickly, if you could send an email to that email address, screenshots are our best friend, I have to tell you, because um, that helps us not have to recreate whatever issue it is that you're encountering. It just lets us see it. So if you have never used, sorry, I'm going to do this one last time, you guys. Um, my favorite tool for screenshots is this here. You'll see this little Chrome extension called Awesome Screenshot. And I, I use that more than the Command Shift 4. And the reason why I do that is when I take a screenshot of something um, after I do it, it allows me to go nuts with it. Like, hey, this is where my specific issue is, like right here. Or it well, allows me to just edit it. What's that extension again, Kelly? It's called Awesome Screenshot. Thank you. And it's a Chrome extension. And so I really love that because then it's like, help with this. And it just allows me to go crazy with it. So um, if you can send us a screenshot of whatever it is that you're seeing or your kids are seeing, that makes it, that makes us be able to help you a lot quicker. So um, just wanted to share that with you. And as for the rest, we've got about 15 minutes for us to kind of troubleshoot with you. So if you have something that you want us to address or you need us to address, we are happy to hang out with you for a little bit. All right. Otherwise, we'll see you next week. Hey, Stephanie.